one of the most obnoxious things that's become a, uh, acceptable in society today is every time you meet somebody, it's like a, a job interview. So what's your name? I'm your own. And what do you do? Nothing. And uh, where do you live? Nowhere. I'm homeless. And, uh, and like, what, why are you asking me all these questions? Why? What do you want to know? What are you, am I work for you? You can borrow money for me? What do you care? What do you care where I live? Are you going to come to my house? I don't want you to come to my house. Where do I work? What, you want a job? Why, 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 what do you want? why, why are you asking all these questions? Well, you know why they're asking the questions? They're trying to size you up. Are you better than me or no? What do you do? Why, what do you do? Why do I care what you do? If you're a dentist, I'm going to say, oh, you know what, can you check my tooth over here? <laughs> what are you, why, why, why do I care what you do? I want to know how much money you make. You tell me you're a plumber, I say, oh, what, you work for Roto Rooter, make uh, 50 bucks uh, a day? Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I'll, here's some stocker. Hey, hey, buddy, hey, hey. You know what, I'll, next time my toilet breaks, I'll call you. What are you going to tell the guy? The, guys are, the guy tells you, no, I'm a plastic surgeon. I'm a, uh, I don't know, a uh, lawyer, makes $900 an hour, $1,000 an hour in New York. Because people are stupid enough to pay that, including myself. I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a something, I'm an engineer, I invented something, I invented uh, paper. You tell the guy that, automatically he knows, oh, this guy, I'm going to respect him, not respect him, I'm going to continue this conversation, not going to continue this conversation, I could use him, not use him, he's a prospective client, he's not a prospective client, it's mamash completely obnoxious. Now, I used to do it also. In the business world. Why? Because I was looking for clients. So I'm making it very clear. Yeah. Oh, you invest in the market? Like that's the third question. Oh, what's your name? What do you do? Oh, you invest in the market? Why? Because I'm actually look, I'm making it very clear. I want a client. I wasn't exactly the greatest at these face-to-face meetings because that's just the way I am. But in general, it's people size you up. Now, if they don't know enough about how much people make, or they're not really so sure how successful you are, because you could say you're a doctor, but you could be a doctor two, three years out of med school, so you're still practically, you know, paying your uh, your loan still. You're not really doing anything. You know, you're still a quarter million dollars in debt, a half a million dollars in debt. So even if you're making a hundred thousand, you still don't have money to eat. So what's the next question? Where do you live? Where do you live? Why? I know the area. Oh, you live in Manhattan. Which part of Manhattan? Oh, you live in downtown? Okay, so you're like, okay, you're like high income, but not high assets. You have high income, because big rent or big mortgage, but you don't have a lot of assets. Oh, you're in uh, Midtown? Ooh, which part of Midtown? Is it the West Side? West Side, you're like, okay, but not so much. Upper East Side, Ishtabach Shimon, nice to meet you, sir. Why? You're the most you're the richest guy in, in New York. Oh, you live on Billionaire's Road. Yes, sir. Would you like me to drive you home? There's a road called Billionaire's Road in New York. Why? You're, only if you're a billionaire, you're allowed to live there. It's new. Fascinating how much money people actually have. And no life whatsoever. That they actually have to make a road called Billionaire's Road. But anyway, the... People want to size you up. They want to know where you live. You start telling them a certain area, and they start, hmm. Now they're just doing calculations. Like, it's like the chemicals. Like, this, like, mad scientist in their head has, like, the smoke coming out of one uh, jar, and the other one he's about to put it in. Like, try to see, what can I do with this? He's a this. He's a that. He lives here. What can I do with this guy? And then they continue asking you these questions like you're in a job interview it's so annoying i try to run away from these things or i try to end them really quickly how do i end them really quickly i tell them what i do that's the benefit of doing what i do now if i were on wall street if i say i'm on wall street then people want to continue talking to me but now it's not the same why it happened to me actually a few days ago a week two weeks ago whatever it was i went to this new shul and uh (laughs) sitting i try not to talk to anybody at the end of the prayer i try to usually run away but sometimes people stop me um yeah i'm not as social with other people as i am with you guys 
And uh, anyway, so I tried to run away, but the rabbi of the shul or something was there, stopped me and it said, uh, oh, so uh, what brings you here? I said, I live here. Uh, where do you live? <laughs> I live over there. Uh, oh, and what do you do? So I knew right away, this is a good one. I could say I'm a rabbi, but then yeah, we're going to continue this conversation. So, I do kiruv. You should have seen his face. It's almost like I killed every cat in the neighborhood. It's like, oh. Like, almost like I offended him. It's the strangest thing in the world. It, it's boggle, it'll boggle your mind. It's almost like I told him I'm a Nazi in disguise. But I like to go to the Knesset for fun. Like, strange. Oh. Really? You look you. Yeah, it's okay. What's the, what's the problem? I don't sell crack to kids. I just try to make the Jews more religious. He looks at me like, oh, wow. The conversation ended. The conversation ended. Why? That's the way the world works. It's the way the world works. Either they love you or they hate you. So, so anyway... It's, I wish I, I wish there was like a little camera following, <laughs> following me around with all these conversations. It's very very interesting. So anyway, uh, my, my my wife and I laugh at this stuff all the time. It's just it's just an interesting thing. But anyway, we um, we see this all the time. People size each other up. Where you live, how many kids do you have? Is this your first marriage, second marriage, eighth marriage, and so on and so forth? It's very obnoxious. It's actually not good to do uh, at all. If you want to get to know somebody, ask them meaningful questions that will yield you no benefit whatsoever. Don't ask people what they do for a living. Don't ask people where they live. Ask them something that's meaningful. Something meaningful. Not where they live and what, the, what are you going to do? If he tells you he lives around the corner from you, what are you going to do? Stop by his house? Like, what... You have to, when you ask questions, ask questions you actually want to know the answer to for a real positive reason, not some selfish or egotistical or uh, reason. Because also, this could lead you to sin, just to give you an understanding. For example, you tell him, you, you live, let's say, in a place where, the, you, know, you, uh, I don't know, you live in a lower middle class neighborhood. And this guy or this woman that you met... She, you ask her, where do you live? And she tells you, oh, I live in this place. And you know this place, cheapest house on the block is a million dollars. Guess what? Immediately, unless you're a very righteous person that works on themselves, immediately you're making a sin. What's that sin? Velot achmod. Jealous. Oh, you live in a million dollar house, huh? Psst. What do you do? Where'd you get that million dollars from? Who'd you rob? Why? Because we're jealous. We're jealous of other people. If you have a jealousy instinct, you have to, you have to, you have to make sure not to put yourself in that situation. Everybody knows themselves. Everybody knows themselves. Some people don't get jealous. Some people, it doesn't make a difference to them. What you have, you can have a helicopter on your front yard. It won't make a difference to them. Some people, they do. It depends on you. Everybody has something. If you are a jealous person in general, refrain from asking people about materialism. Why? Because when they give you an answer, you'll become jealous, you'll make a sin from the Torah. So anyway, moving on. Rabbi Yossi ben Kisma tells us a very invaluable lesson. You want to get to know somebody, or you want someone to know you, tell them what's important to you. If family is important to you, that's what you talk about. If uh, money is important to you, that's what you talk about. If Torah is important to you, that's what you talk about. That's what you show off about. Same thing, vice versa. If you want to get to know another person, see what they want to talk about. What are they more connected to? If this person likes to talk about politics, that's who they are. They're a politician, even if they don't work for the government. There's a lot of politicians that don't get the salary. Almost 400 million in America alone. So... That's the next lesson. 